I've encountered some peculiar fishing regulations in my travels. Most of them simply raised an eyebrow, but some were straight up inconvenient. So much, in fact, that one rule even pushed me to get married sooner than I'd intended. I did a quick Google search and found a handful of quirky international fishing laws and dozens of outdated North American ones, most void of reference or proof. Not one to fuel rumors, I phoned various fish and game offices in search of answers, only to find out that many of those folks didn't know the answers either. Since I couldn't get to the bottom of most of the outlandish reports I found online, I dug into my own experiences and resources. Here are a few fishing rules and traditions you might not know about. In Germany, it's illegal to release a fish that falls within legal retention limits. This is a relatively new regulation passed in the 1998 Animal Welfare Act with underpinnings in concerns over animal cruelty. It's even technically illegal to go fishing without the intent of keeping a fish. In British Columbia, it's illegal for a licensed fishing guide to fish with, accompany, or even drive a non-resident to a classified river. The law applies whether the non-resident is a friend, partner, or even fellow Canadian Sorry, Alberta. In an attempt to crack down on illegal guiding in the 1990s, the BC government mandated that any fishing guide spending time with a non-resident of BC on a classified river must be doing so as part of an allocated raw day, which is basically a means of reserving guided access to a river. But the vast majority of licensed fishing guides, like myself, don't own raw days or even guide on systems that require them. The only way past this outdated law is through written permission from the government with proof that the applicants are related by blood or marriage. Admittedly, years of denied requests from the government pushed me to marry my Australian husband about a year sooner than we'd planned. You might not know that in Australia, it's illegal to tickle trout down under. Down under their belly, that is. This practice requires a stealthy angler to sneak up on a trout and rub its belly until the fish goes into a trance-like state, making it easy to lift it from the water to toss on the bank, presumably for dinner. Another little-known fact is that in New York, you need a fishing license to even net a fish for another angler. In fact, any attempt to help a friend land their fish without a license is illegal. It's called illegally assisting another angler and can result in a fine. I spoke with David Lemon from the New York Department of Environmental Conservation, who confirmed this and referenced the definition of fishing in their 2019 synopsis. As per page 54, fishing means the taking, killing, netting, capturing, or withdrawal of fish by any means. This includes every attempt to take fish, plus assisting another person in taking or attempting to take fish. New Yorkers, beware. Even if you've never touched a fishing rod in your life, steer clear of struggling anglers asking you to help bring their catch to hand. On a trip to Mongolia several years ago, Mark Johnstad, founder of Mongolia River Outfitters, got me up to speed on local etiquette and practices. Nature is sacred, and while it's not a written law, it is considered highly disrespectful to urinate in rivers there. Mongolians also believe that if you drop your hat on the ground, it should be disposed of rather than worn again. The rationale behind this is that our heads are closer to the heavens and therefore considered holy, while our feet are less holy because they touch the ground. But the strangest superstition I've encountered while fishing internationally involved throwing rocks. My guide in Iceland explained that a portion of the population believes in the hoodoo folk, invisible elves that live in a parallel world, who you might injure by skipping stones. While a ban on throwing rocks on or off the water isn't enforced, it is something to consider if you're trying to mesh with the locals. Another one that comes to mind is from years ago while I was fishing in Quebec. Two guides accompanied me on the province's famed Grand Cascopedia, double the guide ratio I anticipated. One walked me through the run while the other waited nearby with the net. Glenn Legrand, longtime manager of Salmon Lodge, informed me that every client must fish with two guides. He explained that the stipulation came about in the 1980s in an attempt to create more local jobs and that all camps and outfitters on the river follow this rule. Because the Grand is managed on a beat system, anglers wanting to fish for the river's world-class Atlantic salmon need to get used to a lot of hired help. While I was trying to find out more about crazy fishing laws, I encountered some rules that seem too weird to be true. Turns out, most of them are. In Idaho, for example, online reports claim that it's illegal to fish from a camel's back. Curious, I phoned the Idaho Department of Fish and Game to assess the validity of these claims. I was informed this all stems from a hoax and has no merit. After a little pressing, I found out that there was once a law against fishing while on horseback, which is likely where the camel rumor started. But of all the peculiar laws that I heard about, one Montana law came up the most. Rumor has it that unmarried women in Montana can't fish alone and married women can't fish alone on Sundays. 
I finally heard back from spokesman Greg Lemon. He explained that he couldn't find a statute confirming the law, but that he'd continued looking for a definitive answer. He said, regardless, if it did exist, we don't enforce it. It would be counter to who we are as an agency and to our deeply held belief that the outside is in us all. To rob anyone of the opportunity to fish in big sky country, be they married, single, man, woman, or child. Thank goodness. You just never know what you'll encounter when fishing abroad. If you've experienced a regulation or cultural norm that surprised you while fishing, please let me know in the comments. Thank you again, and please be sure to subscribe.